your chickens and goats and stuff eat just a ton of food and you're looking for a way to supplement that because feed is so expensive, well stick around because today we're going to be talking about barley fodder and how it's super easy to grow, super cheap, and can supplement your feed for your chickens and goats. So this idea is actually really simple to get started. Uh, we're just going to need some plastic trays, some tubing, some epoxy, and a couple of other miscellaneous things, but I'll put them all in the links below so you can grab them if you need them. So let's go ahead and get started on this build and go from there. So to get started, we are gonna take our plastic tubs. I got these from Amazon. They were like 10 or 15 bucks for 10 of them. Uh, and after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to need to put holes in the bottom of this to make sure that the water drains out of it. So we're gonna get our uh, drill and drill a bunch of holes in the bottom just to make sure there's plenty of ways for that water to get out. Now, with that, you can see all those holes there. That will be perfect. Uh, we also need now a place for that water to go. We can't just let it drain out um, on the floor. We want to use that water and recirculate that water so we uh, reuse it. <laughs> so we're going to get some vinyl tubing here and then we're going to drill a hole in the corner of another uh, plastic tub tray. Uh, and that way we can push our vinyl tubing into the corner of that. Uh, so that way when water drips down out of it, it'll kind of leak into that vinyl tube. Uh, we got a little plastic epoxy here from Lowe's, but it's also on Amazon below. And then we use that to seal up that vinyl tubing up against that tray to make sure that no water leaks out of it. Um, this will make it super easy because what we're going to do is drain that water out and into a bucket and put a submersible pump in that bucket to push the water back up. Uh, we'll make sure to get some of that epoxy on the inside and then let it dry. This stuff dry takes a little bit longer than normal epoxy, about 15 minutes, so make sure it's nice and set before moving it. So otherwise you'll just break the seal and have to redo it all over again. So after that, we got a collection of different fittings. So to go on another section of tubing that'll connect to the pump, uh, but that vinyl tube will basically go up to this, uh, these fittings. And if there's a better way to do this, please help me. I didn't know. Uh, and then it will connect it to uh, small drip tubing from those little bunch of connections. So we can see here, this is the bucket we're going to use. And then I basically fit up all of those fittings and, and tubings behind the table we got there. Um, here's our submersible pump. All we got to do is uh, basically slide on that vinyl tubing under the fitting and then uh, put it back in the water. Now, if we look up above, this is where we're going to put all of our trays and everything. You can see we've already put the tray that's got the drilled holes into the tray that's got the vinyl tubing attached. And then we put a little few spacers in there just to make sure it's nice and level. I just 3D print stuff. You could use little chunks of wood or plastic, whatever. Um, out of that bunch of fittings you can see on the bottom right there on the, on the tray, uh, we actually plugged in drip tubing and hung it from the ceiling. And uh, as we tried to use some drip sprayers, but as you could tell there for a second, it didn't really spray very well. Um, that's because the pressure isn't great. So uh, what we're going to try and do is try and at least get them even or maybe spray as much, best as they can evenly. So, so we attach some uh, plastic tubing or PVC pipe quarter inch uh, PVC to kind of get them stable so they can at least push their water down even if it doesn't spray or at least put it down instead of moving the, the you know, drip tubing with the sprayers all over the place. We also use some of the little tiny zip ties to make sure it just hangs properly is we, we really tried. I, I really would have preferred to have some sort of spray mechanism, but the problem is these pumps just don't have enough water or don't have enough pressure to spray. I, I went ahead and tried to fill this up. This was a mistake. You'll see why in a second with some water by letting it drain through the entire system as a test. So I just went ahead and dumped a gallon of water in there and then I found out pretty quickly <laughs> that was a terrible idea because it doesn't drain that fast. <laughs> and uh, so all of that water just started dripping out of the main drip tray and into the collection tray and not, and then that didn't let water out fast enough. So uh, it started leaking all over everything on there and underneath there, including our freezer. <laughs> so uh, we basically now we'll just dump water into the bucket that's underneath the table. That bucket will then hold all of the water. It'll pump water up and out into these drippers. And then once it's done getting all of the barley stuff uh, wet and fresh water in it, it'll drip out the tray back into the bucket. So now let's move on to the actual barley. Uh, you can get this stuff really cheap. It's just plain barley. We got 50 pounds for like 25 bucks at our local feed store. Um, and then what I did is I got about a pound of it-ish, give or take a bit. It doesn't have to be specifically or really close. 
and I put it in mason jars and I uh, added enough water to cover it and let it soak for 24 hours. This is actually a super important part of the process to make sure that it germinates and sprouts. Then after 24 hours, we're gonna go ahead and get it into the trays. Uh, basically just pour it out. We can keep all the excess water in there and let it drain out because it will drain properly now finally. <laughs> So after we drain everything out and dump all of the grains out to get as much out as possible, um, we're gonna need to spread this. I've seen a lot of people have really fancy ways to do this, like putty knives, all that stuff that's probably recommended so you don't get miscellaneous bacteria in here, but I didn't, so I just used my hands and it worked fine. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and run a test of the water, make sure it pumps out fine, make sure everything gets wet fine and everything. So that was good. Now something, just so you guys know from the future, um, in this uh, design that I found, especially if you're gonna stack these trays one on top of each other uh, to grow multiple at a time, make sure you don't drill as many holes as I did. You really don't need that many holes. The problem is, is if you have too many holes, the water just drains out really quick and doesn't get every single grain of barley wet and therefore won't sprout. So I uh, went ahead after I shot this and grew this, I went ahead and actually used hot glue to cover up a bunch of those holes from the bottom to make sure the water stayed in and was able to get everything all wet and good. So after about a day or two, you'll see sprouts just like this here. It starts coming up and it looks uh, like it's gonna make some good progress. And this will take about a week to get fully grown and you can pull it out and give it to your animals. And then after about six to seven days, you'll end up with something like this. I'm super proud of how this turned out. Now I will say because I didn't use a nice spreader and because I didn't have a good watering system to get it evenly watered, it didn't grow as best as possible. But this is my first try and I'm gonna come up with ways to make this more efficient and better in the future. But overall, it, uh, it looks good. Um, this was after six days though, and as you can see, some of it isn't actually together yet. Um, when it's all done, it should all clump into one big, like, uniform piece that you can just easily pull out. And as you can tell, it's not. Um, you can see it's growing, but it's not really growing together, and that root system hasn't really set up like it should. Like it does in the corner here, uh, you can see that. That's how it should be. Uh, evenly throughout. So I'm going to give it another day and then after that we're going to go ahead and give it to our goats and see how it does and how they like it. Unfortunately, <laughs> a lot of our goats really didn't care for it, that, uh, which is odd. But Aurora, our white goat here, really loved it. So I gave her a bunch, she ate it, and I'm thankful for that at least. So I'm going to go ahead and see how the chickens like it uh, and that should be a different story theoretically. Because <laughs> if they don't like it, what's the point? But, uh, of course, I went into the uh, chicken and duck area to see if they like it, and they were scared of me because I had the camera with me. So, uh, you can't really tell if they like it or not from this video, um, but trust me, after I left, I tried to get some more video that you'll see here in a second. Um, I even tried to chase them around to see if they'd stop and eat it. Didn't work. Actual, in actuality, after I left the area and stopped recording, they actually went to it and went crazy over it, and especially the ducks, because the ducks like to forage in grass and stuff like that, and they do like scratch grain, and so do the chickens, and it's kind of like scratch grain a little bit, because I think there's actually barley in scratch grain, but I'm not sure. I will put everything you need from here to the trays, uh, to the tubing, um, the sprayers you can figure out yourself because I wouldn't recommend you doing that. I will find out a better way. But the pump, the bucket, all of that other stuff that you need uh, in the comments below. So make sure to check that out. That does help us help the channel out quite a bit if you at least check them out and then purchase them in the future.